This video is on the properties of enantiomers. Enantiomers will have the same physical properties. They will have the same melting points, the same boiling points, and whatnot. They'll be pretty difficult to separate. However, the chemical properties are different. The most significant difference between enantiomers is that they have different rates of reactivity with other chiral reagents. This is not limited to a reaction vessel. This actually happens in our bodies too. For example, methamphetamine. One enantiomer of methamphetamine can be found in Vicks nose sprays and they clear up your nostrils. Whilst the other enantiomer, as we know, will make you want to rob a liquor store. However, taking the enantiomers to find out which one you have is probably a bad choice. The most common way to distinguish enantiomers is to use plain polarized light. Turns out another property enantiomers have is that single enantiomers in solution rotate plain polarized light. What on earth is plain polarized light? Let's look at it. We can agree that light is a wave and sometimes a particle, but let's focus on the wave part. Regular light oscillates in all directions. I.e., It's a beam with waves in 360 degrees. Right? If we use a polarizer, i.e. something that only lets waves in a specific direction pass through, we can filter out everything else so that all oscillations except one are filtered out. Plane polarized light oscillates in only one plane, or in one direction. Hence now, once we have polarized light, if we shine this polarized light through a sample, it will rotate that so that it will not be at the same angle as it initially was. We would say that the sample or the enantiomer is optically active. If the rotation occurs clockwise, we assign it a positive or a D, D for dextral rotatory, so that we know that that sample rotates it to the right. Whilst if it rotated anticlockwise, it's assigned a negative or L, L for level rotatory, i.e. it rotated towards the left. These are alternative notations for R and S to identify your molecules but they are physical properties associated to structure, not direct structural properties. There is no correlation between R and S and DL slash plus or minus. But back to optical activity. We talk about optical activity using specific rotation. Specific rotation, well there's alpha bracketed with the lowercase d, is a normalized value. It equals the angle of rotation divided by the concentration times the distance traveled by the light through the sample. This number can identify a compound, but it is concentration dependent. So as long as you have the same concentration, you can identify your molecule. So it's a good test for purity of enantiomers. For example, what do the values look like? Well, sucrose, your sugar, has a specific rotation of positive 66.37. Whilst, say, 2-butanol, negative 2-butanol, has a specific rotation of negative 13.9. So we could also call this L-2-butanol. Well, what would the specific rotation of the opposite enantiomer be? Well, it turns out it is the opposite. So a D2-butanol would have a specific rotation of positive 13.9. This does not change. Furthermore, once we know the structural relationship between the R being the D and the S being the L, that won't change either. We can't predict from a structure which way it's going to rotate, but we can confirm it, and at that point we can correlate them. Well, what if you have a mixture of enantiomers? Well, if it's a 50-50 mixture of enantiomers, both rotations cancel out, and therefore we will not see any rotation. 
This mixture would be called a racemic mixture. This is important. Learn that term, racemic. We designate a racemic mixture as a plus minus or D dash L. And it often occurs when you have a pure enantiomer and you cause it to react with something that does not attack from a specific direction. However, if you have a random variation of other concentrations, so like a 70-30 or a 20-80, you will get um, rotation in the direction of the majority amount, but it won't be as much as the pure enantiomer. 